Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. Today I'm here to talk to you about one of the special maritime plants that you can find here in coastal maritime forests in South Carolina, North Carolina, and farther to the south. The name of this plant is the Yopan Holly. Its scientific name is Ilex vomitoria, and it's the only North American plant species to have caffeine in it was drank by the indigenous peoples and somehow it fell out of favor. Why isn't this a drink today the same as tea and coffee? Stay tuned to find out the story on this really fascinating holly. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. So behind me here is Yopan Holly. This is a native plant to the maritime forest and it's characterized by alternate oblong leaves with a slightly toothed edge on it. You can see that this particular sprig is in flower. It has four petaled tiny white flowers and like other hollies it'll produce an abundance of berries during the winter, red berries. These hollies are dioecious, meaning literally two houses. That means that there are male plants and female plants. So if these are planted in your yard and you wanna have those red berries in the fall, you gotta make sure you have a female plant and a male plant within a reasonable distance of it. These plants have been cultivated and are used as native plantings in people's yards. They'll grow very thick, very dense foliage. They can be used as a hedgerow or a fence row and they're very beautiful decorative native plants. I'm always an advocate of native planting. But the really interesting thing about this thing is its caffeine content. This is the only plant in North America that has caffeine in it. The indigenous peoples use this as a drink often in ceremonies and when talking with another tribe or making peace, but it was also used in rituals and a purging ceremony where they would drink lots and lots of this. It was called black tea, and they would drink it until they would vomit. And it turns out that there's no emetic properties to this. Uh, it's very similar to drinking a cup of tea in the amount of caffeine in it. And you know that if you drink too many cups of coffee or, or tea, you can get those caffeine jitters. So it's no more toxic than that. So the American Indians must have added an emetic plant, an emetic plant or emetic substance is something that'll make you throw up to add to that purifying ritual. Our early settlers cued in on, on this plant here and would take these leaves and roast them and dry them and use them just as you would for tea for a stimulating, pleasant drink. Records show that this plant, this tea, was used by Spanish settlers in Florida and St. Augustine as early as 1615. And in fact, if deprived of this tea, they experience symptoms that can only be described as caffeine withdrawals. It was very important to the settlers. Throughout the South and colonial America, this tea was popularly drank and it became variously known as Casina, Yopan tea, Carolina tea, or Appalachian tea. So what happened to this popular drink? In South America, there's a drink called Yerba Mate, which is also made from a similar holly, and which is also used by the indigenous peoples and the settlers they've taken on, but it's still drank today, and it's really a multi-million dollar industry, and very, very much a part of South American culture. In fact, shout out to my cousins in Argentina who I visited in Buenos Aires who showed me how to prepare herba mate and enjoy the drink. And it was a very important drink to have between friends. What are some things that possibly led to the disappearance of Casina tea or black tea or Appalachian tea from American culture? Well, it's possible that William Aton, who's a British botanist, may have been politically influenced by the East India Tea Company, who had a monopoly on the trade for tea. And you know that selling tea to the colonists and taxing it was really big business back in the day. He named it 
Ilex vomitoria, and he named it with the species name vomitoria in reference to its use in purification and stuff. But I think that might have been the nail in the coffin for it to disappear from popularity like tea would be. While early settlers and late into recent history, people still drank this uh, concoction in the South, it became labeled as a poor man's drink. So I think that was another reason for it to fade in popularity. Today, with a recent resurgence and in interest in natural, organic, and healthful drinks, we've seen some resurgence of popularity of this as different stores and it's been commercialized and you can buy this tea online. So look online and you can find Yapon tea leaves to buy and make your own Yapon tea. It's a fascinating, fascinating history of a plant that's here native, that grows here in the maritime forest. I hope you found this episode interesting as I did. It really gives me a lot of, to think about. I want to further research the history of Yopon tea in indigenous peoples in America. Thank you for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. Remember, if you like what I do and what I share, please subscribe to my channel and give me a like. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. But thanks again for watching this episode nature at your door.